Hey everyone. Looks like you're having some trouble with the autorhythmicity of the heart and how it stimulates the contraction of its own muscle cells. I get it. How does the heart just fire off electrical impulses all by itself so it can do this 10,000 times a day? Well, it's actually not that complicated. And in fact, it's pretty cool how self-reliant the heart really is. You see, unlike skeletal muscle, cardiac muscles don't need a nerve to stimulate an action potential and its contraction. That's why they're called autorhythmic cells. Auto means self, like an autobiography is written by the person it's about. Cardiac muscle cells make their own rhythm. It all starts with a group of cells called the sinoatrial node that generate the heart's action potentials without being stimulated by a neurotransmitter released by a presynaptic neuron. I know, I know, it sounds complicated, but let me show you what I mean. In the right atrium, pretty close to the superior vena cava, is a group of modified cardiac muscle cells called the sinoatrial node. These cells have a plasma membrane, just like any other animal cell. And they also have a membrane potential due to the difference in ions inside and outside of the cell. The resting membrane potential in these nodal cells is minus 60 millivolts but it's not all that stable of a resting membrane potential. That's because these ion channels here are voltage-gated sodium ion channels that let positively charged sodium ions slowly leak in because they're open when the cell's at rest. That's why they're called slow voltage-gated sodium ion channels. Meanwhile, these potassium ion channels are closed so they don't counteract all these positive ions coming in. Because of this, the nodal cell's membrane potential is slowly becoming less negative without an outside stimulus. Since the potential is approaching zero, meaning it's becoming less polarized, this is a slow depolarization of the membrane. Now this is a voltage-gated calcium ion channel. The voltage that stimulates the opening of its gates is minus 40 millivolts. We'll call that threshold. And when the nodal cell's membrane potential reaches that threshold, it opens and calcium ions, which are higher in concentration outside the cell, rush in very quickly down their concentration gradient. That's why they're called fast voltage-gated calcium ion channels. This influx of ions with a charge of plus two causes a rapid depolarization that reaches just above zero millivolts, at which point the calcium ion channels close and the influx of calcium ions stops. But that's not all. This is also when the voltage-gated potassium ion channels open. And since positively charged potassium ions are in higher concentration inside the cell, they flow out and they bring the membrane potential back into the negative. In fact, the potassium ion outflow brings it back to minus 60 millivolts. We call this the repolarization of the membrane, and it stimulates the opening of those slow voltage-gated sodium ion channels. That's why they were open in the first place when we started this thing. This process takes about 0.8 seconds in the average adult, which results in about 75 heartbeats per minute. Since the SA node sets the pace for your heart rate, its nickname is the pacemaker of the heart. Now yes, there are nervous system influences on the heart's rate and force of contraction, but we can talk about that another time. Hopefully this video helped you understand how cardiac muscle is mostly responsible for its own electrical stimulus. Next time, we'll talk about how these cardiac action potentials travel through the atria and ventricles so they can actually pump blood through your vessels. See you next time.